Today we're going to install a brand new four blade from Eprops. Hey, uh, Larry Mednick here, and we've got a brand new in the box uh, Eprops Excalibur four blade. So they did a really nice job packing everything so there's no damage. And uh, here's our hub, and then we have the two blades that are going to be packaged with each other, two in a pack, instructions, manual. In here we have the uh, digital protractor that comes with each one, so this is all included with the uh, propeller. You can see there are beautifully finished carbon fiber blades. Our uh, Nordlock washers underneath each one of the uh, bolts and under the central nut. And four of these are going to hold the hub halves together and four of them are going to uh, hold the entire hub to the engine. So we pull this apart and, and now you see the colored dots that we're going to use to line up the proper blade with the proper, so here's the yellow and so we'll put the yellow in and then we'll do the green There's our red and our blue. So now there is a blue dot that goes here, here, and then we have to find it on the outside, which is here. And what all this is about is dynamically balanced uh, the propeller. So these are dynamically balanced at the factory and we want to assemble it basically the same exact way that it was balanced at the factory so that they're completely ultra smooth. Four of these, like this one, they go all the way through and um, they hold the propeller to the engine and then the other four actually go through to the other side of the hub. So there's our four that hold this together and now what I've done is I've uh, made this a complete unit that we can pick up. And one of the things you got to watch for is it's very, very easy to get the hub to where you have a ginormous gap on one side and then you have basically no gap on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to tighten down the other side and see if I can get this gap somewhat even. And now the way you can kind of really check this is just by visual looking around and uh, this is good enough for now I'm gonna go to a hand wrench so I have a little bit more control but now we can put this on the aircraft okay so what EPROPS uh, provides are threaded drive lugs so these are threaded and uh, there's just four of them for the four blade the six blade has six and we're gonna insert them into the propeller and basically you can pick any uh, four that you want so long as the two are opposed to each other and next to each other. So we're not using these. These are actually for uh, adding weight, so just kind of ignore the extra holes there. And then I can pick up the propeller as an assembled unit that we did on the grass. And now we're gonna use these four that go all the way through to line up with these drive lugs. So we're just gonna slide the prop on and push it into position and I can start these by hand and then what I like to do is I go back to my uh, impact driver and I'm going to pull these drive lugs through just by threading the bolts in and that one there I gotta kind of get it started you may have to hold it to get it started and just kind of going back and forth okay so now we've got these drive lugs seated now what I'm going to do is back them off again
Okay, so what you're going to find or what you're looking for, we talked about having an even gap. We just want to uh, check that out. Is you're going to find that some of these blades are very, very tight when you get it about how you want it. And so these two that are opposite of each other, I can't even turn by hand. This one is completely loose. And this one I can turn fairly easy by hand. And that's really where you want to get the propeller before you start pitching it. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start off by marking the blade. So we want to come out 400 millimeters, or for us uh, guys in the US, that is going to be 15.75 inches. And we're going to mark each blade. So the way we do this is I'm using a grease pencil, but you can also use a piece of tape if you don't have a grease pencil. And you want to get these fairly accurate. There we go. And that should work there. And I'm just going to spin the propeller around in the direction of the rotation, as always, on the 912. And we're going to do the same thing for all four. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to try to get it close. This would be way too much pitch. And you can see I can just really can't turn that by hand. So I'm going to use my mallet. And what we're looking for is going to be 18 degrees on our mark. Now before we can do that, we need to zero out our gauge. So what we want to do on the Revo is we want to find something that's flat, like the top of the spool spacer. Uh, it could be something different on your aircraft. And we want to zero this out. And now what we can do is we hang this with the hook on the propeller, lined up with the mark that we just made. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate. And it's okay to go backwards a little bit with the propeller. Um, an eighth of a turn isn't going to hurt anything. And we want to get this bubble right in the middle. And the importance of that is simply that we want to get each blade in the exact same spot as they come around so we can get a consistent measurement. Okay, so basically right now we are showing 24.9 degrees and what we're looking for is roughly 18 degrees. 18 degrees should give us on the 100 horsepower um, a static RPM of around oh, 5400 about 55.50 on climb out, really nice number. So I'm gonna hit the blade right here with the mallet. And we'll take a look. It's very important that you remove the gauge off of the blade and because this will bounce right off, hit the ground, and then you'll be needing another one. And so that was 22 the last time, and now it's dropped. And we're at 17.5, so that's pretty close. We gotta go the other way. And as we get real close, we're going to stop hitting it quite so hard. Now we're at 19.0, and here we go. I like to put my finger here, it kind of tells me if it's moving, but uh, basically a little bit of patience. And by keeping the blades tight like this, it's going to ensure that they don't move. That's 18.9, not move very much. Eighteen eight. I felt it move that time. Seventeen point nine. Hang that again. Make sure we're centered. I'm gonna bring the blade up to get that bubble right in the middle. Eighteen on the nose. And now, without touching this blade again. I'm going to now go 180. So usually people that install propellers often enough will go to this blade, but it's very important we don't go to this blade because this blade is still fairly loose. So we need to come up to this blade. So we're skipping a blade. We're gonna go ahead and see where it's at. I get my bubble in the middle, bring this blade up slightly. There we go, perfect. And this one happens to be setting at 27 degrees, so it's going to take a couple of big hits here. Seventeen point seven. And I always find it easier to have too much pitch 
and then hit it right here on this side to bring the pitch down when I'm making my final adjustments. So we're at 18.9. That moved quite a bit. Right at 18 on the money. I think I got lucky on that one. That was too easy. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start tightening up this blade. Again, still in the star pattern. And I'm doing this by feel. You can set the torque wrench if you like in incrementally so that you're getting equal torque, but that won't really be necessary uh, unless you throw the gap off because you're not uh, keeping the gap straight or till the end where you actually torque the propeller. So now I want to check this last blade and that feels pretty good. That feels pretty sticky. So I'm going to use the last blade that hasn't been pitched and I'm going to bring this all the way around and I'm going to bring it up into position. So 24 Newton meters is the torque value that we're ultimately going to torque the propeller to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it to around 18 Newton meters right now. And we're going to do a star pattern across the hub. And even though each one is torquing out, as I continue to torque the other ones, they will continue to, there we go. They'll usually continue to turn like that one just did. So you wanna really just keep working around the hub until it stops turning and it will just click like this one just did. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, set our torque wrench to 24 Newton meters, or that's about 212 inch pounds and then we're going to do a final torque. Okay so now that it's torqued now we need to check and keep our fingers crossed because a lot of times as you're torquing down the hub the blades will actually move and turn again you may have to start all over again so let's see how we did. We have 17.7 so that one moved quite a bit as I torqued it down. Seventeen point nine. So so far we're within two tenths of a degree. Seventeen point nine and seventeen point eight. So we are within spec. Uh, if you really want to uh, go back and get them all perfect, you can. But this is good enough. Within 0.3 degrees of one another is all that it needs. So with that, now we have opted for the optional spinner cone, which I think is really neat. Um, so if you don't have this, you would basically be putting on the Nordlock washer and a regular nut. We're going to use this uh, elongated nut here. And uh, this just uh, threads right on. And we're also going to torque this as well to 24 Newton meters. So let's just go ahead and do this. Wait for it to torque. There it is. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna secure our spinner with our nylon bolt with an O-ring that comes with it. We're gonna use a six millimeter Allen wrench and we're gonna fit the cone on and we're gonna thread our bolt in and I can't stress enough, it's a nylon bolt. Don't try to use a torque wrench on this. You need to just snug it down. And I'm turning using the small end of the wrench, not the big end of the wrench to give you an idea. And uh, get that snug and our propeller is complete and ready to do a uh, run up test.